Well, there's always been a debate about keeping debts and deficits small when it comes to our government. For some, it's all well and good to keep running a deficit if that spending results in fueling growth. Others say having big deficits and mounting debt can mean future generations will have to pay up. For more on this topic now, we're joined by Ken Goldstein from the Conference Board from Atlanta and Gordon Gray, who's the Director of Fiscal Policy at the American Action Forum. They're both live from New York. Gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. So the U.S. has been debt-free since 1835, I was, I was noticing in the research. For the British, it was three centuries ago. I was looking at some of the headlines floating about, for instance, why America's gigantic national debt is a good thing. And America's nation's debt, does it really matter? We're not just talking about America, but some economists clearly believe an economy needs a sufficient amount of debt to function properly. What is your take on this? Well, it depends on what we're borrowing for. I mean, if we're, if we're building a ship, if we're building a building, it's, that's one thing. If what we're doing is, is borrowing money for current operations, that's like a family that's borrowing money to pay for groceries. That's not a good idea. Right. Right now, the United States is borrowing essentially to pay for consumption. We're paying for structural deficits that reflect our, uh, our uh, 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 demographic challenges and healthcare challenges. So we're basically, a large part of our annual deficits are structural, paying for Social Security and Medicare and, and other uh, consumption transfer programs. That's less productive. Well, tell us a little bit more. What's more damaging for a country's economy, economy uh, a, a debt or a bigger deficit? I would much prefer uh, to have a bigger deficit in a given year than a large accumulated debt portfolio like the United States has right now. And, and Ken? Well, it also makes a difference on whose, you know, whose money we're borrowing. So if, for example, for every dollar that the government spends, federal government spends right now, they have to finance at least 30 cents of that, and a lot of that money is financed through China. So that's a, also a transfer of, of money outside the United States that doesn't help the United States that much. Some say, some say we spend more to keep the economy growing. Others say shrink the, the deficit, actually, to avoid fiscal trouble in the future. Ken? Again, depends. I mean, you know, if that's, you know, for construction to build a highway, build a building, build a ship, that's not so bad. If it's to, you know, fund medical uh, expenses or other expenses, that's not so good. Well, given the uh, state of the economy, uh, the global economy, and the debt levels of some countries, are we headed for trouble, or is this just how the world works? We could take uh, the situation that Greece is in, for example. Right. My, I am very concerned about uh, the prospect for global deleveraging. The United States, the central bank, is already uh, signaling that they will, uh, that the Federal Reserve will begin unloading its balance sheet from quantitative easing. That's essentially going to put into uh, the marketplace about 20 percent, 20, 25 percent of our annual deficit uh, on top of uh, telegraph future uh, interest rate hikes. So I'm very concerned about the environment in which uh, the United States and the, and the global economy is, is going to confront this global deleveraging. I, I, I don't think if the Federal Reserve is going to build down their, their balance sheet by $10 billion a month, that that's going to have a tremendous impact on a $20 trillion U.S. economy? Well, they're starting at 10, and then they're ramping up to 50. Uh, and they're doing it in the face of future interest rate hikes. And so it, it, it gives me a little bit of concern. Well, look, let's bring interest rates into this, because it also depends to not just how much debt, but how much debt service. But if we've got interest rates, both in the United States and across the globe, that are well below the inflation rate plus some return to investors, then the debt service isn't that big a deal. It's a deal. It isn't that big a deal. Yeah, it's a deal. It's also, it is a deal to uh, the federal budget, because right now, even though we have a, a large debt portfolio, because of low interest rates, only about 6% of the federal budget uh, is being devoted to interest costs. But that's going to double just to the normalization of interest rates. So that has me concerned both from a global economic perspective in terms of the interest rate environment, but also from a budgetary standpoint. Alrighty. It's going to double, but not tomorrow. All righty. Well, Ken Goldstein and Gordon Gray, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much both Thank for you. joining us from Atlanta and New York.